Good morning, everybody. Um, I thought I'd just do a little thing, a little thing. I'm basically making some Christmas decorations. So I'm cutting up 10 by 10 sheets of text up. I'm trying to keep a minimum amount of waste as possible. And I'm looking to cut something about that size. And what I'll be using is this here, which is the easy cut. Really, really good fun. Um, I've actually not used it a huge amount in the last couple of years I've had it. But I was like, oh, I can cut circles out. I have a tool for that. So anyway, so I'm just going to show you the way that I do it, again, with the, the least amount of waste, because I only want something about that size. So I don't want to cut a circle and then have lots and lots of little pieces that I'm breaking off. So I'll show you how I do it so that I can use it as a base to make my little decorations. Pop him over there because I'm bound to drop him and then that'll be a wasted decoration. And pop a little circle over there. So the size that I'm doing is just roughly about three inches, the circle. So what I'm doing, I'm going to just take off from my sheet. I hope you can see this on the wooden background. I'm literally going to cut down a score there and a score the other side. And then because I use a lot of clear glass when I'm making jewellery, I use it for capping dichroic and using it underneath other glass to keep the cost down. I'm just going to keep hold of this so I get all of these pieces. So instead of, say, lots and lots of jaggedy bits, I've actually got some really good usable pieces of glass there. Put those aside. So there's my piece that I'm going to cut my circle out of. So taking this, these here, if you've never actually used one before, you've got adjustable parts on it. So this is to adjust the actual wheel. So you've got quite a few little wheel cutting wheels in here. There's three. So what you're doing is you're adjusting that so that you can actually alternate between the three as they get used. Um, and then you've got this adjustable piece here, which you actually use this to slide backwards and forwards, depending on if you want a tiny circle or a larger circle. So I'm going to just put my glass in first before I adjust this because I actually find it easier to pop the glass in as central as possible and then do a little test to see where my actual wheel is going to go to make sure that I don't slip off the glass at any point. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to move it in ever so slightly and then tighten, tighten it up. So that is now solidly tight and I can put my glass down and again just a little test run without touching the glass just to make sure that my little wheel is going to hit it completely where I want it. So all you do is put pressure on here, hold the glass to start with and as you push down and put pressure you just turn it round. So I'll try and show you what I'm doing. And there you've got a score which hopefully meets up if your glass hasn't moved. I guess you could stick your glass down with some double sided tape or something if you wanted to to keep it um, where you want it. But I just once you've put the pressure on it tends to it does tend to stay where you want it. So um, there's so many different ways that you can actually then take the edging off of here. But the way I like to do it is I, I run into the score that's already there and do a line either side so I've actually got if you can see that I've got then a little triangle and I do that for all four sides if I can actually hold my cutter in my weird hand there we go and I end up with oh look look see I end up with little shards of glass everywhere so don't worry blood burns off um, so what I'm going to do is I've got a bag here and it's already got some bits of glass in it because I've been, as I say, cutting quite a few circles in order to make my Christmas decorations. And then using my groziers, I'm literally going to snip the corners. So holding it firmly within the bag, take the corners off and work your way round until you've got all the four corners off and then you're left with these little pieces here which 
I'm just going to go in and just gently nip around them with this. It doesn't have to be perfectly perfect in the sense of a really smooth edge because when it melts it's going to go circular anyway and all those edges will smooth out. The advantage of this as well is that if I was using the grinder to actually grind it round I'd have to make sure that it was completely clean on those edges or it would leave like a matte, almost matte finish on the edge on your decoration which you don't really want that. Um, I'm using the bag as I say to stop some of the glass shards going everywhere because I do cut myself quite a bit um, but they're all coming out anyway so uh, it didn't really work but when I'm concentrating more um, it does work but there we go a little bit of blood there oops <laughs> so there is a circle and as I say it's not perfectly smooth but you've got a nice circle to actually work with then and then all I've been doing with these is I'm taking two layers with my circles and then I've got hold of some steel mesh um, which I was lucky enough to be given so I've just been taking tiny little strips of steel mesh and cutting them down to make a little hook you can get specific high temperature wire but for me personally I actually like using this um, it's not too big within the glass and I'm just making a little hook which will go inside for my decoration to hold i was just going to show you how to cut circles but actually i thought well as i'm doing this i might as well film it that one might be a little bit small but what i'm doing is then just placing it on top of that piece of glass and then the other piece of glass on top of that um, i might actually make a slightly bigger hook because as this melts um, it could end up taking over so i might make a, a slightly bigger hook for that one anyway so that is the start of your Christmas decoration. Now depending on what you want to do with it, um, as I say I've made these little ones here and I've got little bobbles for my snowman and then I just made lots and lots of different size white dots. So um, for those of you that have uh, made dots, you know how satisfying it is. You just bung any little pieces of glass in. Um, so any little pieces like this. Um, and because you're fully fusing it, it doesn't matter if it's one layer, two layers, whatever. Just bung it in and when you melt it, you'll get all different coloured, uh, all different sized dots. You can do it for when you're using them as embellishments. You just put loads and loads of different colours in if you want to. Stack up your little microwave kiln and end up with lots of little little dots like that which I've used for my little snowman there. So the first thing I do when I'm doing it is I will have a look at what white glass I've got. I've been using just bits and pieces, anything I've got that I can get hold of um, in my little scrap box or whatever and I'm literally just layering up pieces at the bottom to give it a little snowy snowy effect um, I've actually got quite a few different types of glass here as well in the sense of different types of white I've got dense white I've got oh I don't know I've just got loads and loads of different little pieces um, but it doesn't really matter because it all does its thing and you know it looks like snow as long as it's not yellow we're okay um, the other option you've got is to actually take a sheet of white and I've just done a wiggly wine line wine is it wine o'clock yet? I don't know. So a little wiggly line and I've just been cutting off a random edge which will then give me a little bit of a almost like a little landscape of snow. Is that a technical term? I don't know. So what I can do then is I can put that here and then I've marked it with a sharpie. Here we go. Kind of like in my mouth. And then I normally do a really poor effort of cutting on a curve. I'm not particularly good at it, but it's uh, it all melts and it all looks pretty when it's done. So let's see if we can actually get an almost curve out of this. It'd be amazing if we do, because every time I've done it this week, I failed miserably. 
so that's my start then i've got this here which is glass tack gel i've used the pink one as well um, which is great but this one um, because it's thicker i just find it easier to use it won't dry in the sense that um, straight away so you get quite a lot of time to move it about but it just holds pieces in place when you're doing it um, i'm just going to take the bottom one off because i'm not worried about that at the moment because i've still got to put in a new hook for that because i made it too small now i've got lots and lots of off cuts um of little triangles to make some little trees and things like that so i'm just gonna have a look and see what i've got got this little one here and then i've got this color which i believe is an umber um oh this is yeah so this one's umber so i'm not even sure what this one is i will have to have a read um but i've been using this just to make the little tree bark and trunk so i'm just going to take a little strip of that now looking at the size of my tree i don't want it too thick so there we go and that happens as we know that happens sometimes but it's fine because we're going to use it all it doesn't matter she says <laughs> I'm so professional can you tell so I'm gonna put this down here now I don't want it too tall because I don't want that really to overlap so I need to take those down just a little bit more and a couple of ways you can do it you can do it like this or if you've got nippers trusty nippers and if the glass will fit in between because there's the gap then you can just nip off a piece but no the gap is too wide so we're back to doing it with this Do you know it's all play isn't it it's all play if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't you haven't lost anything you're kind of just mucking around with it and having fun so that one there and that one there i'm putting two layers on just to make sure i've got a thick enough trunk and then that will be positioned there so what I'm going to do again is come in with my trusty glass tack and I will dip that on there to stick it to the other one. You can use super glue but if you're using super glue use it very sparingly because one it stinks when it's burning, two I've had pieces where I've used way too much super glue and there's just a little poof sound as it catches fire in the kiln if that ever happens just keep going because it is going to burn off eventually and your, your little mini fire is contained within your kiln so uh, <laughs> health and safety and all that um, but it has happened and I didn't know what it was and it scared me but uh, all was well in the world so I've got another piece here so I'm going to go for a different colour and what I'm going to do is work out what angle I want that looks like a tree And then I'll do exactly the same again with a little bit of piece of this. Oh, which I already have. Look at that. See? Best laid plans and everything. Whoop. Oh, did it again. Put things away. Tidy. Never tidy. I put a picture on Instagram the other day of my workspace and even I looked at it and I was like, what are you doing? You're so messy that one down there that one there and then you've got two little trees so the other things that I've been using are um, I've got glass lane line white pen I've only bought the, the black and the white one just to try because I've never really used them before and I thought oh we'll give it a go and um, the most I've actually done with it is drawing mandalas which has been really good fun and when it comes out a little squeeze on there to get it going making snow it's all going to shoot out isn't it i could be really sensible and stick a little needle in there or something just to unblock it there we go it's coming out and then i'm just dollop dopping dopping dolloping whichever word you choose to use little bits of oh giant bits of snow 
it would appear. They're not small bits of snow. That was a lie. But you get the idea. Just pop in little bits of the white glass enamel around. And this is a high temperature enamel, I guess. Um, I should really get some more colours because it's really good fun once you get the kind of the hang of controlling the flow. You can do some really good pictures and there's some amazing drawings and glasswork that people have made but uh, I haven't sat down and concentrated enough yet with it all. There we go. <laughs> that doesn't even look, that does not look like a piece of snow. There we go. There's a weird bit there where obviously a bit of the glass is thicker and it's come out. So you get the idea anyway. So what I'm also been doing is I'm going to make sure this is not coming out funny. Just been doing a little bit of snow on the edge of my tree. And then kind of using the nozzle to move it across a bit. And just doing some, give it some layers as it were. I'm not even sure if it looks like layers, but when it comes out, it looks cute. So we're okay with that. There we go. Oh, it's moving over. Popping back. It looks like a wonky, wonky trunk. <laughs> I'm going to knock all my snow off now. Normally I would do this bit first, but for some reason, because I'm filming, I'm like, yeah, let's just do this the most difficult way possible and make a mess. A little gap there. Kind of gaps. And we'll do the same on the other one. It's like icing and I'm rubbish at that too. So don't get me to ice the cake. Just give me a bowl of icing and a spoon. Happy days. Right, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna rough that up a little bit so that it doesn't look, not that it looked perfectly straight to start with, but you know, I wanna make it look more like a bit of a branches on a tree and that is my two trees little Christmas decoration so I'm going to go ahead now and make this hook again because uh, I said I made it I made it a bit small and the last thing you want to do is spend all your time making a little decoration to then find your hooks too small and you can't put a bit of ribbon on it so I've got the other piece of texture to put on the bottom in a moment. And the reason I'm doing it the two layers of texture is because I want it quite a substantial decoration, but this I don't mind if it spreads out a little bit when it's in the kiln, so it doesn't matter that it's higher than the like the six mil. So if you know about the six mil rule, you'll know that all glass goes to six mil when it's melted. So um, if you've put a lot like higher than six mil, it's literally going to spread out until it gets down to that level. Or if you've got less than six mil, it's going to gather itself up until it gets to that height. With these, I don't want too much movement on them, but you'll get the idea of, uh, let's say, when you see the other one that I've made, um, it's quite thick. But I've also left it a little bit textured, so I've taken it out. A little bit earlier than I would have but hopefully these trees will look like these trees but we'll see what happens when I put them in the kiln so this is how it came out in the end if you've enjoyed my video please look at any others that you want to watch and uh, like and subscribe thank you